Unfortunately, there are problems in computing for which we do not have a polynomial time algorithm. These are problems for which we still need to come up with algorithms to solve them, or at least to approximate them. And there are basically three main approaches that you can look to try to come up with some kind of an answer. So the first approach is to try to find an algorithm that will solve the problem exactly, uh, not in polynomial time, but significantly better than brute force most of the time. And so, for example, applying dynamic programming to the traveling salesperson problem reduces it from being a factorial complexity to exponential, which is significantly better, but still not polynomial time. Um, another approach is to find an approximate solution in polynomial time. There are lots of examples of that. We're going to talk about those, some of those in detail. And the other thing is to look at your problem and see if it's a special case of a more general problem. So, for instance, there's a problem, uh, weighted vertex cover in a, for a graph, um, which cannot be solved efficiently. But on trees, we have a good dynamic programming algorithm, which does solve it in polynomial time. So some of the exact solution strategies uh, that we have are exhaustive search. Uh, we can use dynamic programming, sometimes uh, for many instances of the knapsack problem. Um, that will run efficiently, uh, backtracking, and we're going to talk about that in a lot of detail, and, bran and branch and bound that is a refinement of backtracking. It adds uh, an extra way of trimming down how many different uh, possible solutions we have to look through. I want to emphasize again that none of these are polynomial time in the worst case. Um, that's uh, otherwise the problem would be in P and we'd have a polynomial time algorithm for it. So the key thing when we work through the examples to pay attention to is what's called the state space tree. So for these problems, which are basically search problems, uh, we want to be able to organize the search in a rigorous fashion that's going to allow us to efficiently search through to try to find a solution. Um, Usually the state space is defined in terms of a Cartesian product of sets. For us, we're going to represent that as a branching tree, hence the name space space tree, and where each i coordinate is going to represent sort of one dimension or one choice for some aspect of the possible solutions. This picture is a representation of um, subset sum problem, and we're going to talk about that in detail. And then we're also going to talk about um, the N Queens problem um, in some detail to illustrate backtracking. So here's the N Queens problem uh, where N is equal to 4. We're taking a really simple example. But the idea is that on an N by N chessboard, you want to be able to place the N Queens so that no two of them are in the same row, column, or diagonal. In other words, if you're familiar with chess, None of the queens will attack any of the other queens. So all the queens will attack spaces that do not contain any of the other queens. And so the first order of business, again, is to develop a state space tree. And we're going to define that using sort of the, the levels of where the, or the row where the queens are placed. So the first queen will be placed in the first row, etc. So let's see what that looks like. So here's the state space tree for the four queens problem. Um, it, beginning, the board is empty. Then we place the first queen. We could play the first queen in the uh, first column, uh, the first queen in the second column, and then the third column and the fourth column. There's a certain amount of symmetry here. So in fact, at this, this first level, we can ignore the other two uh, just by flipping the board around the middle column. So the next level is placing the second queen. Okay, So we can't place it here. That would be attacked. We can't place it here. It would be attacked. So that's what the, those X's mean. And But we can place it either in the third column or the fourth column. And then we work our way down. We'll notice if we try to place the third queen uh, using this board, there's no place we can put it where it's not being attacked or attacking another queen. Um, 
So we can just eliminate all those possibilities. And for this board, it turns out that we can place the queen here in the second column, and it won't be attacked by either of these other two queens. On the other hand, if we try to place the queen here, then it's attacked by this queen. If we play, try to place the queen here, it's also attacked by that queen. Come down to here, and we have the queens already, and now we go to place the fourth queen. Can't be there, can't be there, can't be there, and can't be there. So none of these are a solution. So we're going to backtrack all the way up, because we're done here. We're going to backtrack all the way up to here. We've completed all the possibilities for the queen being placed in the first column. We backtrack to here, and now we try the second column. The second column, okay, follow a similar idea, and eventually it leads down to a solution. So basically, what are we doing? All we're doing is using depth first search, but when we get to a place where a constraint is going to be violated, then we prune, and we can prune the entire subtree of that because once a constraint's violated, then and you've placed that queen there, then there's nothing you can do further on. So as soon as you know that the subtrees cannot lead to a possible solution, then you backtrack to the node's parent. So it's really just depth first search with this additional condition for stopping going deeper into the tree and retreating. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, symmetry can allow you, in this problem especially, it's easy to see, it can allow you to ignore these other branches on, off the first root node. So here's the state space tree, a little more readable form. You should take a look at it, make sure you understand why the X's are where they are and how the search goes. So just a quick come down here, come down here. No, you can't get anywhere from here, so you backtrack up, do this. Then come down to here, right? Uh, this won't work, so you backtrack up to here. This won't work, this won't work. So we're done here. We backtrack to here. There are no more possibilities out of this node, so we go back to the root, come down here. So again, just step first search. Next problem I want to look at is subset sum problem. So given a set of numbers, um, let's say they're positive integers to make our life simple, and some number d, we want to find a subset of a that such that the sum of the elements of a star are equal to d. So, for example, I mean, let, let's let a be 3, 4, 5, and 6, d is equal to 9. Well, by inspection, you can figure out pretty quickly there's two possible solutions, 3 and 6, and 4 and 5. Those will be the possible solutions. So now, try to draw yourself a state space tree for this problem. Um, the uh, starting point will be, of course, that A star contains, is the empty set. And then you need to think about how, what the branches of that are, and how it branches down the tree. So here's a picture of the state space tree. Uh, we start out here, and we can either include 3 or not ex exclude 3. So if we include 3, then the sum so far is 3. If we include 4, then it's 7. Then we try to include 5. That's too big. Okay, that's 12, so we can't do that. So we backtrack up to the 7. Uh, we can exclude the 5. Okay, But then if we try to include the 6, it's too big. And if we exclude the 6, of course, we, we're out of numbers and we're too small. Notice that because the numbers are in sorted order, once I, try, once I go down here and try to go... Uh, and, and show that the number gets too big, the sum gets too large, then I don't even need to explore this branch. Why? Because every add, thing I might add on this branch is going to be bigger than 5. And so anything down here is going to have to be bigger than 7 plus 5. And so none of these really, these branches are possible. So you can really just stop right here as soon as you come back. Now, the only reason we can do that is that these are all positive numbers in ascending order. So, um, you need to think that helps in prune the tree here, the fact that we have these in sorted order. Okay, so work through the rest of the tree. You can see to find the solution, we have 3 in, exclude the 4, exclude the 5, and then 6 in. 
Similarly, to find the other solution, we exclude the 3, we include the 4, and then we include the 5. So for subset sum, the state space tree basically consisted of include or exclude branches, denoting whether or not the element from A is in the subset. Uh, if we sort the elements in increasing order, we can prune. Make sure you understand how that works. Uh, once the sum becomes greater than target, then we know we don't have to go any further down the tree. Um, and in the worst case, this will be exponential. It's fairly easy to cook up an example where the answer will be the only the only solution or or the only solutions will be at the far right side of the tree. So you'd have to do depth first search all through the front of the tree to finally get over here. You might try doing that on your own. Uh, just cook up an example where the solution is going to be over on the far right. So here's a problem for you to do. Test out your skills. Um, given these numbers, A3, 5, 6, and 7, find try to find a subset sum that's equal to 15. And you can see what it's going to be, actually, um, 3, 5, and 7. So pause the screencast and try to work through the tree and find the solution and make sure you show how the pruning goes. And then the next slide will show the solution. So here's the solution to that problem. Uh, again, you can pause the screencast and see how well it agrees with what you came up with. So here's a picture of some pseudocode that provides sort of a general outline of how a backtracking algorithm would work. Um, you would, uh, again, it's going to be recursive. So we're going to assume we have a solution down, it's called a solution down to the ith level. And we're going to see what we're going to do at the ith level. If it is a solution, then we just write it down or keep track of it. Otherwise, what do we do? We look at all the possibilities in the choice set to go to the i plus first level. If those are consistent with xi, whichever ones of those are consistent with the solution so far, proposed solution so far, I should say partial solution, uh, and the cons whatever the constraints are, then we add that to our partial solution and we call backtrack on that. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, it's a little, this step here, there's a lot hidden in this step. This is what's really very dependent on the problem. So that's it. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good feel for backtracking. And in the next screencast, I'm going to talk about branch and bound, which is basically an sort of enhanced version of backtracking that can be used for optimization problems.